Hello everybody and welcome to yet again another Canadian Highlander set review. My name is Benjamin Wheeler and I'm joined again by the one the only Adam Price. Adam, how are you? Good. Hey everybody. <clears throat> and uh, this time around we've got a special guest. And I'll give you a clue, because <laughs> we're doing the Shadows Over Innistrad uh, <laughs> set review. Uh, he's been on the cast before... Uh, he's been on There Can Be Only One, where he absolutely butchered his interview. We have Spencer Konica. How are you, Spencer? Not doing too shabby. And Spencer, we're not going to troll you too hard today, because Wizards has already done enough trolling themselves. Harvester troll. Yeah, Harvester troll. Is that even a card in the set? <laughs> last set. Last set. What, what was it in last set? Uh, was it a good one? Harvester Troll. It was the, the one that entered a battlefield. You could sacrifice a permanent to make it a uh, 4 or 5. I think. How do you know that? <laughs> because I have a good memory. Yeah, alright. Well, that's a good enough segue into how we feel about the set. Because last I remember, uh, you were quite a big fan of Innistrad there, Spencer. I mean, we all were. Is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. No, I was pretty fan of it. I wasn't playing during Innistrad, but I'm a fan of a lot of the cards. Well, so. you, I mean, after it came yeah, out, yeah, you, yeah. Uh, you like a lot of the cards mm -hmm. you see, you know? Uh, there's a lot of black mana symbols. Yep, that's a big thing for a me since of, Torment. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of things to get a lot of players excited, because the set is filled with playable cards, and it's filled to the brim with flavor. And that's where the trolling aspect comes, because I think we all agree that Shadows Over Innistrad is very appealing to even the spikiest of spikes. For this format, right? Like, all the cards are playable. Well, not all the cards are playable. There's plenty of playable cards, but there's also a bunch of uh, stinkers in disguise. Yeah, and we're also moving out of, like, one of the most... Well, okay, I think it's one of the most boring sets ever. So we've gone from, like... The whole Eldrazi menace to moving into, you know, a six set again. Yeah, you know, with some really neat cards in it. Mm -hmm. Oath of the Gatewatch, I, I gotta admit, you know, it ended up actually being more appealing in practice yeah. than yeah. we thought it would be. Yeah, full disclosure. That said, that's not much. Like, it was going into it, it was like a gas station sandwich, where you're like, this is going to be bad. And then after it, you're like, okay, you know, it wasn't great, but... But I, I was didn't, hungry. Yeah, I didn't get yeah. food poisoning, right? This like, that's that's what you are looking to gain from that, is no food poisoning. So it's not like Magic or Origins, which was obviously the Dunkin' Donuts coffee, where it's yeah, like it everyone sweet. wants it, everyone gets it, yeah. at one time in their life. No, that, and like, coming out of that set was... Maybe Tim Hortons were the Canadians. We should be more patriotic. Yeah, and we're also talking about, like, we're, we're, everyone's listening to three huge Dominaria fanboys, so coming out of that set was... Uh... Oh, yeah, let's return Let's return to Dominaria. <laughs> I, I actually think I regularly post on Morrow's Tumblr, <laughs> yeah. and he never posts my question, which is, when are we going to go back to real magic? <laughs> <laughs> every, every set comes out, it's like, hey man, when are we going to just return to that Dominaria action? I kind of want to take a trip back to Otaria. <laughs> I don't know about yeah. you guys. I think Otaria so, had all the charm of Dominaria, but they just put goofy hats and shoulder pads on everybody. <laughs> and, and like weird, yeah, it's got this kind of like... They wanted to stand out. They, it's like, they were still kind of this fantasy theme, but it's our fantasy, you know? Yeah, totally. So they made the cloaks look all messed up. <laughs> this you know is, what I mean? Atari, Atari was one of the continents, right? Yeah, um, it's a world. plane. I thought it was a plane. No, no, it's a British Oh, it's, it's a, a continent, continent on Dominaria. Yeah. Because the main continent's Terius Yar, yeah. which has, like... I don't I'm getting more. Mind. I'm getting more bombed. Anyway, so, no, that's cool. Know, that's cool. But what we should really be doing is investigating the set for Highlander playables. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So basically, what we are going to be doing, as we've done before, is we're going to be going through the cards that have created a lot of discussion over the spoiler season, uh, talking about whether or not they are actually playable, whether or not they're traps, how cool the art is. Spoiler alert: uh, there's a lot of good art. In this set. Yeah. And absolutely. that, I mean, that has to do with, I guess, the overall theme of the set mm -hmm. as well. But, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty nice set to look at. So, yeah. Uh, I can always get behind the sort of, like, uh, what's it, the like, kind of Lovecraftian style, you know? Um, eldritch Horror. I'm, I'm, I, I dig that. And uh, I'm always watching for more uh, <laughs> beautiful pieces of art, like this card, Always Watching. 
So it's an enchantment, one white white, that says non-token creatures you control get plus one plus one and have vigilance. So, Adam, uh, I hate to do this right off the bat, sure. but uh, how often do you attack with one mana, two ones in white? Uh, <laughs> currently, that has never occurred. Okay. All right, uh, thanks for your input. But. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Spencer and I are uh, we're pretty accustomed to the savanna. Uh, not, well, I mean green, white, sure, but I, I was well, trying to talk about the lions. lions. The lions, yeah. That we're up for that OG 2 1 for 1. No upside, no downside. You get what you pay for. Which White has plenty of. And I think White has plenty of anthems Absolutely. by now. I mean, we, as far as playable ones or ones that see play in White Weenie, you have, I mean, you have Honor of the Pure, which is easily the best one available. Absolutely. And then Crusade. you have Crusade, which, which is sometimes playable, sometimes not. I'd say it's almost a meta choice sometimes. Yeah, it's... It's I, not good. I never understood the argument against playing Crusade, because you're not really blocking with that deck, and a lot of your creatures are already evasive, or they have First Strike, making them more evasive than they appear. So even if they have late creatures that are getting buffed, does it even matter? No, and that's why, like, that's why... Sometimes it's just more about... Sometimes there's mirrors, sometimes there's a lot of green-white or Abzan blade decks, and you don't want to be pumping their team for the crackbacks to be lethal, yeah. which can sometimes happen with, you know, all of a sudden these Kitchen Finks are becoming 5-4s. And uh, the, sometimes the kitchen, the crackback can be lethal. So that's it, what you're more concerned about. It can certainly mess up the math. So, and then four, four, to, five, yeah, four, to round four, it wow. out, we, 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 we understand yeah. the power and toughness. Of <laughs> I'm good at math if uh, Splitter Twin <laughs> dumped me in. <laughs> the man knows his uh, power and toughness. Anyways, but we also have Spear of Heliod, which is not two mana, but having a tacked on ability that can help, you know make racing a little more difficult for them? Does that push it into playable? Now, none of the cards we mentioned are always watching, but that's what I'm getting at, is that if we've covered the two two mana ones, and then we're talking about a third version of the Anthem that costs three mana, that has attacked on ability that might not be playable? Well, Glorious Anthem saw play in White Weenie because it's hard to interact with enchantments. Like, yeah. the, one, the one downside is, although Spear of Heliod definitely has like, the high upside... Where you get to activate later in the game, you're probably losing the game if you're activating it, I think, most of the time. Right, but yeah. you do have this upside, but artifacts are so much easier to interact with in Highlander. So many people packed artifact hate. The, the, the fact that Glorious Anthem's an enchantment makes it sort of more appealing sometimes to me in uh, terms of like one versus the other. But this one's just strictly upside. This one, I think, smacks both of those out of the water. Just out of curiosity, um, like, how prevalent is a card like Jihad in those lists, too, where so, it's plus two, <laughs> plus one? That was, I was going to spring that one up, that Jihad's probably my favorite one of yeah. the ones, but also the one that I'm only going to play in a super aggressive build. Right. That's the build that you're playing Crusades in, that's the build you don't care what they're playing, you're all evasion, you're all flying, you're all protections, you're all shadow, and you're just trying to crack for it as hard as you can. Uh, whereas the more mid-range tricks, uh, rebel builds so that Ben uh, would pilot a lot of, uh, those ones I would not play Jihad in, because uh, you basically can either get blown out, or uh, it's sometimes it's difficult to cast, believe it or not, even in a mono-white deck, white-white-white, it's not exactly easy. Yeah, you're going to play more utility lands and that kind of shell, as well yeah. as the only real anthems you're playing are the ones that are just knock knockout cards, right? So, but in this case, we're talking about always watching, like, is always watching one of those ones where you would consider it before one of these other uh, important anthems. Like, does it push another anthem out of the anthem slot? Well, one thing you need to watch for, Adam, is vigilance. Let me tell you. <laughs> okay. I played a lot of the uh, Woodland Wanderer, the four mana, uh, six, six, and four color mm. of blood. Yeah. Turns out vigilance is a pretty good ability sometimes. Now, they're not as good as flying, or trample, or protections, or a lot of other first strike even sometimes. But vigilance is still pretty okay. <laughs> the fair no, vigilance is pretty okay. It's the unsung hero of evergreen mechanics, right? Like vigilance is, you know, it's old as the hills. It's it's the worst mechanic on Lightning Angel, but at the same time, sometimes it's the most important. Well, Lightning Angel, man, it's like besides flying, 
and obviously haste, which are the best, I think, abilities. Yes, those are the creatures. other two abilities on that card. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, it doesn't actually have vigilance. It doesn't has attacking. Doesn't cause it to tap. <clears throat> That's being errated to vigilance. <laughs> wow. Okay, mind, okay, but... mind you, mind you, I will be damned before somebody catches me playing a time spiral. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Hell I, no. Anyways, as far as I'm concerned, there's only one copy, and it's from Apocalypse. So we should probably watch out for uh, spending more than six minutes talking about a B playable card. Yeah. <laughs> Is watching playable or not? Is this uh, card yep, seeing sure. play? Yeah, I, I think it's alright. I mean, I don't think like I think it only goes in white weenie more or less. Yeah. and I think maybe some green white decks. I don't think so, but um, basically white weenie, yes, but only certain builds. It's like if I was if, to close on out of out of this, if I were to write up two or three stock lists for white weenie to give to somebody, mm-hmm. I don't know if I include always watching in any of them. Maybe one. Mm-hmm. But I for sure wouldn't be like, oh, it's an auto include. Yeah, fair enough. enough. Declaration in stone, one in a white for a sorcery. Exile target creature and all other creatures it controller controls with the same name as that creature. That player investigates for each non-token creature exiled this way. So you declared this card playable, Spencer, which <laughs> I I didn't even want I, to consider. I, I know. I think you guys are going to try and stone, stonewall yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think this one through that much. Um, I was saying that in some builds of once again White Weenie, uh, which used to be a powerful archetype, has kind of flown off the radar a bit. Um, you're looking for these one and two mana removal spells, which there's not a lot of. And in previous builds, you'd play Journey to Nowhere in a lot of these lists. Um, however, when you're Journey to Nowhere, a creature. That's of uh, the four drop variety. That's powerful. Sometimes you can get blown out, like you know, flanked on Cavalier, um, even like Tarmogoyfs. Or but the worst is definitely ETBs like Huntmaster of the Fells, etc., which you need to kill in a white weenie deck. Um, the problem is that if they have any enchantment removal or permanent removal, then they get to blow you out. So here's the other question too. This card gives the, your opponent a um, a clue. So like if you, if if you're like, <laughs> is that, like, the goal of that deck? Like, giving them another draw spell, basically? Well... Oh, they get the clue. They get the clue. No, How is this playable? It's totally playable. In the aggressive decks that want to play the Glorious Anthems and Crusades, I think this is the kind of card that you're fine with playing. It's the same as Dismember. It's like, sure, you're losing four life. Well, these cards are the same, but it's the same axis of thought that I don't care that they're going to get this advantage yeah. as long as they don't get to the mid game. Four life is a lot different than making well, their totally. near enforcer cost but, one less. But you're not thinking of a late long-term game with uh, if you're playing Declaration of Stone. You're not thinking that the game's going to go to turn yeah. six. Yeah. I hate this against Thopters. Just want to throw that out there. Because it just like basically net gains them the, or they get the same amount of mana with Player and Academy out of it. So, but I can see what this would be like. I mean, it's two mana. So. Yeah, I guess if you're you play it in a deck that is just looking to answer whatever they have, like even even if you give them the clues. So that's gonna make me giggle. I, it's gonna, it makes time. me giggle a little bit. The, here's my here's my defense of it. If you're away when you one of your worst matchups or the mid range matchup. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the reason for that is they're playing these haymaker creatures. It actually doesn't have to do with card advantage. It has to do with the haymaker creatures they play, which you have ETBs that either destroy the creatures, make multiple creatures, or uh, affect the board or gain life. So when you're trying to remove those creatures, you want to make sure that's real removal and they can't reanimate it with, um, you know, like unearths yeah. or yeah. reanimation spells, or worse, destroy your oblivion ring or whatnot and get it back. So. I'd, if I was playing a super aggressive build, I don't care if they're going to untap and spend two mana of their turn to draw a card and then only have maybe two to four mana available because I don't have to worry about five drops or titans. I don't care because I'm planning on killing them before then. Like I said, this is like only an aggressive build. Let's open up to um, a better a better card, shall we? That was a really weak segue. We have <laughs> Open the Armory. It's one in a white sorcery. Search your library for an aura or an equipment. Reveal it and put it into your hand, then shuffle the library afterward. So this is Steel Shaper's Gift for one more mana, but it lets you find an aura. Yeah, that's super cool. I'm I, stoked on this I've card. I've heard this rumor that some people are trying to deep six a Boggles deck. I, I wouldn't know anything about it, but I think this would probably be good in that. We don't we don't talk about that deck, all right? Even though I've posted it several times, um, um, I yeah. think I think this card's good. Like what I played in, I think Steel Shaper's Gift is already super underrated. I play Steel Shaper's Gift in Bam Blade. Yeah. What do you get? Is there any deck that wants to nab an aura? Like I don't think there's many auras that are like super. 
There's playable. a couple. Um, I, I guess think of ones you can play in White Weenie. There's the enchantment with a four mana green enchantment pattern or rebirth. That's an aura, right? It's yeah. relevant. Well, that's that. I was about to cover that. Yeah. Like, would you want? I don't know if you'd want this in Sandy B. It's worth noting that in that list you can find pattern of rebirth, as you mentioned, but you can also find um, animate dead. No, demonic halberd. Halberd? Demonic <laughs> Halberg. Oh so there, there was a while where Spencer and I were playing nothing but Sandra Bullock, and we had brewed that you could have another infinite combo using a four mana equipment that has the equip cost to sacrifice a creature. I believe so. And an equip creature gets plus four, plus two. So, uh, I mean, you could tutor that with Stoneforge, and this can also tutor it, but it can also find Pattern of Rebirth, so maybe it's the second coming. Of Halberg Sandy. Oh man, well, I'm really excited. I don't even know if that's. Now you can splash for Goblin Bombardment, so I mean. Finally! <laughs> well, you can. Oh, this can find Mortar Pod! Jeez, no, OP. Uh, Max! The Pierce, uh, the Pierce <laughs> Steel Paladin deck would want to play this? Sure. Surge, hold the front door open for him. Okay, I think this card opens the door for him. But the other thing, too, is we don't. There's not really a lot of aura decks in the format. Okay, yeah, yeah. To get, to get yeah. this a proper closing, sure. this is a very open ended card. Yeah. Right? Like, already equipment is kind of just like, oh, we can't print super good equipment because we kind of screwed up yeah, with we Stone Force a bunch. I feel like they've, they've pretty much. Seem to have said they're not going to print powerful equipment again. But with auras, right? Like, aura, there's a lot of punishment if you do not play an aura properly. Oh, absolutely. Which is why they don't really, you don't really see expensive, like, Boar Umbra or uh, Oaken Form or what, like, you know, the three mana gives it all these stats cards anymore. You see cheap two mana ones or one yeah, mana ones. Yeah. Or if you see, like, kind of, um, Kind of flashy ones that we'll cover later. They cost three, and they're or three or more, and they're at rare. So I think like this just opens up what you can play. And Get your armadillo out. cloaks. Thalia's lieutenant, one in a white for a one-one human soldier. When the lieutenant enters the battlefield, you put a one-one counter on each other human creature you control. Whenever another human enters the battlefield under your control, you put a one-one counter on this card. There was a lot of talk about this card, fellas, and uh, I think it sucks. It's pretty bad. I think just being a human, like, specific to humans, makes this card, like, really bad. Because, like, that's, I don't know, like, that's not going to be enough in here. It's funny, because there was a time when there were so many good humans being printed out, and this was actually when original Innistrad came out. Like, Champion of the Parish, and White Weenie had all these cool new humans. They're like, oh, Champion's just nuts. Sometimes you have these, like, gas draws, where you have this 4-4 Champion of the Parish on turn 3. Um... And, but then they took a huge time off from printing humans. Like, you have, you know, a couple from Theros and whatnot, but nothing, not enough to justify playing a two-mana one uh, Two-mana one-one, that's enough said. Yeah. <clears throat> no wonder Thalia died. <laughs> Jeez. She did? Yeah, well, she yeah, sacrificed she herself. No! Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, why do you have to tell me here and now? <laughs> no, this it's, is the industry actually, site. What are you, know you going to know? It's actually, it's actually filling that we're talking about a dead Thalia, because here we have the Geist, a ghost, so now you're going to be haunted by the ghost of Thalia. No, that was a nice segue. That was not. Do not. <laughs> no, that was bad. <laughs> okay, okay. Topple Geist. About as bad as a I bet I can top that. Um, it's a one mana, one one flyer. That has, when it ETBs, you tap a creature in opponent controls. Nice. And it has Delirium. Delirium says that if there are four or more cards, uh, different card types in your graveyard, you get this ability triggering. Uh, so at the beginning of your upkeep, if you have Delirium, you can tap a creature that uh, player controls. Or beginning of their upkeep, sorry. You tap something they control. This is the Deathrite Shaman of Suntail Box. <clears throat> and that seems... Like a stupid thing to say, but it does so much. You know, I would play if they just printed this as a one-one flyer that taps something when it enters the battlefield. It's already it's insane. already just the best yeah. flyer <laughs> ever. Yeah. Yeah. PSA. Ben, ben Wheeler's been on a bit of a tear with this uh, in his mind, if not reality, of this <laughs> I, flying I dot only, deck. I only played flying mono blue flying men for one like Thursday, and I came this close to winning. But when you were talking about white weenie. The, when versions. I started actually... Maybe you both did well with Suntel Hog Yeah, I, so. I won two Mondays uh, very close to each other in like 2013 or something with Suntail Hogs. I don't, 
I think the other thing, too, is, like, there's, like, this critical mass of ones that now just, like, don't have a drawback, so that you might be able to see, like, a bone splitters equipped to your Toppelgeist in a, in a YJ near you. I don't know. I mean, a one mana, one one with flying, plus an upside, plus two upsides is insane. But yeah, it's, it's, it's a good card. It's good. I think, uh, if, it's if, if you can, it's narrow. Yeah. If you're playing Sun Tile Hawks, you're playing this guy. Yeah. Okay, on Ooh. to the actual real deal, probably one of the best cards in the set, if not the best card. It, we, we haven't Top even five. had this discussion yet. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Archangel Avacyn. So, it's a flip card. And the front side, the, the daytime, is three and two white for a 4-4. Four, four. <gasps> Flash Flying Vigilance. Jesus. That when it enters the battlefield, creatures you control are in- indestructible until end of turn. Oh, it's, it's so that's that's so, already pretty so good. So pause. If this did not have a flip, and it was just the 4-4 four, four for 5, Flash Vigilance Flying, creature ET- ETBs gives it creatures indestructible, you'd play it, right? Oh, 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Insert, for sure. Absolutely. It's, yeah. It, it's tops out magnificently for creature decks and gives you an out to Wrath of God. Like, if you're against the control shell... And you ramp up to five, and they haven't wrapped yet, or something, or they're like, "Okay, I'll spot removal this because I have to deal with it now before they gain value," and uh, then I'll wrap once they play their big dummy or something mm-hmm. like that. And you just pass, or they keep up counter. Uh, they expect you to play your five drop or your four drop, and you pass. Mm-hmm. What do you? What are they going to do? They can't do anything. This is, I think, in every white creature shell, this is like the five drop top one yeah. you wanted. Oh, yeah. This is the one you've always wanted. Because Restoration Angel is already very good. Sometimes not as good as other decks, but always pretty playable. And this is that on crack. This is what you... It's good against every... In good, it's good in every matchup pretty much, except for against hard combo. Right. And so the other ones you're fighting with at that slot, if we're talking about angels, are like Archangel of Thune, and you've got uh, B- Bane Slayer, uh, Bane Slayer Bane right? Slayer. And I Bane honestly think this those. card is like... I mean, it's it's really strong in a creature deck. This like, just so strong. This offers a lot more utility. Like I'd and say, it goes wide, so wide. Yeah, like, like you now have an angel <laughs> kind of for everything, right? You have Bane Slayer as this like aggressive life angel, link. that yeah. lifelink. You have Cigar uh, against so, uh, removal heavy heavy meta. Yeah, Cigar is like good in the mi- great in the mid range mirror, but so is Avacyn now. Oh well, a- but I think Avacyn. Avacyn- where Sigarda was maybe fringe play if there's yeah. like a removal heavy decks. Now Avacyn just takes And that she's easier over. on your mana. And like Archangel of Thune is realistically just like a combo and mid range card. And she's she's like she's Trick City, man. Like yeah. this is t- and, and this is not even covering when she flips. Yeah. She says whenever when a non angel creature you control dies, transform her. And then she becomes a six five flyer that's red. That says, when this creature transforms, it deals three damage to each other creature and each opponent. Yeah, so she just flame spouts the board and deals three damage to everyone. Yeah. It, or no, just, just them. them. Just, just them. them. Yeah, it's not even... <laughs> no, so, it's like a one-sided shit. flame break. Hilariously, I, I didn't even notice their power and toughness change, and I looked at this card quite a bit and got pretty excited. I just knew it had the other ability. I didn't even notice that its power and toughness change. Yeah, yeah. it's bigger. <laughs> this, this is the... This She's is, got blood on her hands <laughs> and wings. <laughs> this is this is the kind of card where you can like they didn't need all this extra stuff. Oh. They could have cut so much of this and it would be like, yeah, I'll play this. Super aggressively costed. I'm mean, this reeks of a six mana card to me, and yeah. you know, five mana this makes it. If it was six mana, I think Flash it would be. Two. If it was six mana, I actually don't think it'd be that great. I think it'd be good. Yeah, but yeah. Me, I think though that it's weirder that the five to six mana is. so... Such a huge jump in totally. Islander, and I think the fact that this has been pushed to five makes it extremely playable. And four power, right? It's four not five. a three five. Like it's they a four four. They stapled so many abilities on on this woman. Like it's like they're having a bake sale. Well, you, you can know? tell they stapled. <laughs> she's no, she's <laughs> serving up justice. <laughs> yeah, you can tell they stapled a lot of abilities because look, their wings are bleeding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, great, great way to ruin. Uh, play this. Uh, play yeah, this card. This card's A plus. Yeah, yeah. I'm auto slamming this into Jeff's guy. Totally. We're on to blue now with uh, Engulf the Shore. <laughs> and uh, Adam, why don't you tell the folks at home what this card does? Okay, so it's a four mana instant. Uh, it says return to uh, their owner's hands all creatures with toughness less or equal the number of islands you control. Uh, Seinfeld, High Tide, sure. Tier two lists. It's it is one blue mana, but I well, think that's a pretty big. It's, like, it's yeah. one blue, but is it really one blue? Yeah, that's true. You yeah. need a lot of islands. Yeah, I don't. I'm not actually sold on this card's playability. 
I don't know. It seems super underwhelming to me, but I guess it's another Wrath in Blue. The, you know, I filed this under my cards. I will never play. We'll rarely see, but we'll lose two ones. This is a card that I'll trade for and never play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can just like out. You can just beat this card by playing creatures with like bigger toughness than like uh, Door in the Siege Tower. Even better, you know. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, it it helps High Tide and Seinfeld shore up some of the bad matches. Sure. Oh, get it? Because it's shore. Anyways, on to something about as bad as that joke. Uh, Jace, Unraveler of Secrets. It's no secret that this Planeswalker isn't very good. I. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't have anything new to add other than just re-saying what I commented on this earlier. The only thing he's unraveling is the futon for nap time. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <laughs> so boring. Because this, yeah. this card is boring. Like, yeah. I don't think it's good, for starters. No. Um, and it, 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 it it's boring because it's Jace. And then it's boring because it's abilities. I mean, the last ability is cool. It's good. But it's... Not worth playing. You don't yeah, judge the Planeswalkers by yeah. their ultimates. <laughs> unless it's like Gideon Jura. Alright, so five mana. Um, it starts with five loyalty. Uh, it's plus one is scry one, then draw a card. It's minus two is return target creature to its owner's hand. And then it's minus eight is just like counter every first spell that they play. So, we, and we've talked, all three of us have talked about five drops. In a variety of lists. Yeah. And their importance in the format... But also, how, what they need to accomplish. And Jace doesn't do any of that. Like, look at the other five drops that you have. Five drop Planeswalkers in blue shells. Tamio. Tamio. Well, Tamio's even on the outline of, like, playable. But sure. at the same time, you can play her and just, like, draw four cards. And then still require somebody to dedicate something to kill her. Or you can play up after they've tapped out or something for a fatty boom boom and start locking up the board. Tezzeret can just end the game. The turn he comes down. Yeah. Um, other, like, five mana planeswalkers, like Sarkin can kill things. Sarkin, kill opponent, the Gideon, Obnixilisk, yeah. Garrick. They're pretty powerful. Yeah. Um, what's the other five mana blue one? The... the, the, the Venser? The, no. Blue white? Uh, not the Venser, the other one. Triple blue. The one that came out in the commander set. I don't even know what that card does. Oh, is that card competitive? No, you mean the Teferi? Teferi, yeah. Oh, that guy's six. Oh, he's six. His, his creature version is, right. is five. Yeah. Anyways, the card, for five mana, it doesn't do anything. It protects against one creature, but unsummon is awful in this format, unless you're yeah. playing flying man. Yeah, so scry one, then draw a card. Like, sure, that's fine, right? But at five, is it fine? It's definitely not what you want to be doing at five mana. I think... If this was four mana, maybe the loyalty was adjusted, we'd be having a debate about if it was good or yeah. not. And that says a lot that we'd be debating it. And then at five mana, I think this is just. Uh, I completely agree. Unplayable, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Don't, don't play this. See you, Jace. Uh, don't let the door hit you on the way out. And please stop printing Jace's. Like, just yeah, kill this guy in the lore already, please. They will never, but. Kill, yeah. kill him off and He's then the least him. relatable planeswalker, man. Well, not for teenage boys. <laughs> <laughs> Edgy teenage boys that yeah. started playing like Professor Layton and watching. Yeah, uh, and watching Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah, that is, exactly. I th- if they just kill him off and that then like, make him. To us. They, should, no, they should just make this guy the villain. Right? Uh, they should. Kill him off, make him bitter that Liliana like didn't take him back after he was an asshole to her. <laughs> yeah, Liliana dumps him, becomes like an edgy teenager, add like maybe add black to him and he can have like little emo makeup. They are he red. Can, he can become <laughs> the new that makes him insane. Yeah, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Thing in the ice. One in a blue. It's a flip card. It's an 0-4 defender. And Thing in the Ice enters the battlefield with four ice counters on it. When you cast an instant or sorcery spell, remove an ice counter from Thing in the Ice. And then if it has no ice counters, you transform him. And when he transforms, he becomes a 7-8 Kraken Horror. And when this creature transforms, you return all non-horror cards to their owner's hands. So, uh, how, are, how are we feeling about this card there, boys? I... Yeah, this card's pretty strong, I think. Personally, I see this card in uh, control list, like an Esper control list, or I see this in Counterburn. And I think that's the only places I see it. But it's very strong in both of those lists. Why not Sorensen or Bug Temple? Uh, first of all, I don't think it, I see it in those deck lists, just because those deck lists aren't good right now. Like, they're... I disagree. I think Bug's in a pretty good spot. 
I think Bug Midrange is fine, but I don't think, uh, um, like, the Sorensen Tempo list is, like... It's just... Yeah, I just don't the think line, that list it, is well, those a lot of the wedge blue decks, like the line between tempo and mid range, is like <clears> people are, and that's the, really the meta call right there. But it's like, how high are you going, and how many uh, cantrips and counter spells you're playing? Uh, so sure, but I mean, like, in order to play this, you got to be making use of the fact. So it delays, right? As a, as a zero four, so it's gonna it's gonna sit on the board. And and when I think of a card that delays, I think of like. I want to see this in a list uh, where, like I said, like an Asper control list, like maybe like a Grixis control list, where it delays for a couple turns, and then it's just this enormous monstrosity after you've countered a couple of the spells and pondered once or twice or something like that. And then in is it uh, counter burn, um, you can just sword him at the end of turn, and then you have this enormous creature that they have to deal with. It's funny, I, when I, I actually think this card's quite good, and when I first saw it, I, uh, disc- I think I saw more in decks like Bug, and also decks like Blue-Eye Red, because it fills the two-drop slot in those decks, which they kind of have a little bit of a weakness with sometimes. That's that's true, yeah. And I also see this card as an investment creature card, uh, similar to the Prowess um, ones, such yeah. as Young Pyromancer and Monastery Mentor, and I'm not comparing it to those cards in power level, those are very uh, powerful cards in their power level, I think, is quite a bit higher, yeah. but much like them, this is a card that you play early but you need to ha- it needs to develop over time to become good. So much like Young Pyromancer, uh, you know if you if you get to jam it on turn two and you can back that up with some counter magic and some cantrips, uh, it can become quite good. Uh, however, if you draw it, you know mid to late game, you need to put a bit of uh, energy and investment of cards into it, which I think makes it you know pretty good, but not bananas. I think this card's quite strong. I think you can play the board to a way where this card is backbreaking against certain creature aggressive strategies, but um, it's not it's not game ending. The the one thing I would add though, like in a list where like a bug, for example, where it is green and does want to play out threats as well, like is it comfortable having those threats popped back in their hand? Usually those decks only play one threat. Like out in like a sort of a general match scenario? Absolutely. Like, yeah. Usually you just swing playing your one threat and then you don't be tapping out unless they deal with your threat or it's outclassed on the board. Interesting. Okay. I, I can see it in one of those decks as well. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that there's more versatility of this card than what it, it lets on, maybe, is what we're sort of looking at. For sure. Ben, as the uh, head blue mage here, I would yeah. say, what do you think? Um, I feel like the initial response to this card should be swapped with the initial response to Jace Friend's Prodigy. Like, when this card was spoiled and everyone's like, oh my god, this card's nuts. Like, I can't believe they printed something like this. And... Take that, and then take when Jace was spoiled, and everyone's like, oh, this seems all right. Like, I don't know if it's that good. Uh, I Switch it. Because, like, I think this card is this card's either going to shine and just be fantastic, or it's just going to be an incorrect deck-building decision. I will admit, though, that I think this card is very idealist. It's not very pragmatic, where a card like Jace, like Vrinz Prodigy, is, like, very wants to do things and yeah. interact at a pace. This card does require a little bit of um, love in the air, you know? Requires a little bit of, uh, bit of magic. Yeah. yeah. You, could, think, you could say that it needs something oh. to get it going. <laughs> <laughs> On to black. We have Asylum Visitor. Two mana, three one. Uh, vampire Wizard. So get your Riptide Laboratories ready. Hoo-ha! At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if that player has no cards in hand, you draw a card and you lose one life. So that's both people. And then it has Madness for one and a black. And I think I already covered that's a 3-1, but it's got 3 power at 2 mana. So aggressive black decks, black red. I love this card. I think this card has so much applicability. Love this, uh, playing this off of my own Liliana activation. I love playing this card in a pox list where I'm, I am discarding cards consistently. I love the fact that this has a... A rel- I mean, it's just an insane power versus the CMC, but it also has an upside if you ever get to the point where um, your opponent's hand is empty and you're in black, so you're casting things like Hymn to you're casting Mind Twist, you're thought seizing stuff out of their hand. So I, I think this card is... Um, it's the, the fact that this is a 3-1 is just kind of staggering to me. Like Otherwise, I think it would just be like another black card where you're like, oh, this is kind of neat, but it's probably not playable, and then they put an- they attack on another power. Yeah, it's just like, oh, this is their attempt at making another bob. Yeah, yeah, thing. here's another black card, you know? Um, but uh, I'm definitely going to be playing with this card quite a bit, um, and I think I want to play it in lists, uh, in attrition lists, 
you know? Um, but I don't think that's where it's the best. I think it's best in just, like, mono black aggro. Behold the Beyond. Five and black black for <clears> sorcery. <throat> Discard your hand, search your library for three cards, and put those cards into your hand. Then shuffle your library. Uh, this just wins when you play it in Storm. Yeah, yeah, for one less mana than your... Uh, Diabolic yeah. Revelation. Yeah, yeah. So, m- for those of you who don't know, um, it was not, wasn't a big secret that one of the uh, greatest tutors in Storm, obviously, besides de- um, Demonic, is that you can get a, a big, giant Diabolic Revelation, and you can find multiple combo pieces and inevitability and even discard sometimes, it, because lately the Storm decks have decided to, instead of just going all in, they tend to ramp and mm-hmm. play hand attack and have a turn with lots of mana development. So this really plays into that strategy, and yeah, it's really good. But like realistically, for the Storm deck, you only need Lotus, LED, and a Tutor, Demonic Tutor, or um, Infernal, to kill them. So three cards. And this card, for seven mana, discard your hand, that doesn't matter, because you're finding three cards. Yeah, you can get Cabal Ritual in that mess as well, which also generates a lot of mana. Yeah. Um, and obviously will. Yeah. I yeah. Mean, we know where this card goes. Uh, it's good. Play it. Yeah, very good. It's, it's, I mean, like I said, it's, a, it's like less mana. Like, that's just yeah. awesome. Dire Graph Colossus. Two and a black for a 2-2 two, two zombie giant. When the Colossus enters the battlefield, uh, it, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it for each zombie card in your graveyard. When you cast the zombie spell, put a 2-2 two, two zombie creature token onto the battlefield. Tapped. So are there enough zombies in mono black aggro to make, make this guy worth playing? So- so I was looking at the amount of zombies that you could potentially put a zombie deck together with. And uh, right now in Highlander, there is uh, several very strong zombies, uh, a whole bunch of really garbage zombies, and a, not a lot of like moderately playable zombies. So you're looking at zombies that are either excellent or really bad. Um, but I think that what this card is, what I think I really want to s- steer this conversation to, is the fact that this is... Pushing those fringier deck lists, like it's providing them with like very strong threats, right? So it's it, and that's I think the big thing about this set is the fact that it um, there's like these cards that are sort of fringy and nichier, nichier, but are still really interesting. Uh, but I don't know if it goes in like an aggro list. I think you maybe play this in like a, a list that's running a bunch of dedicated zombies. Whether or not that's an actual deck in this format is a different conversation. Maybe it's one of those tribes that's, you know, shy three or four more lords yeah. or two or three more lords. They need two or three more one and two drops to become a fringe playable tribe strategy. I totally think that's the case. Like, I think it's looking, it's missing a couple two drops and stuff like that with relevant abilities. And, uh, you know, this one's, I mean, I would certainly even consider this kind of a lord in itself and that it makes zombies. You know, instead of giving your zombies plus ones, plus ones, it's just making zombies instead. I don't know if that qualifies but, as a lord, though. But until they print more playable zombies and zombie lords, it's kind of a colossal waste of time. <laughs> well, I've had enough of this discussion. Speaking of zombies, from, from under the floorboards, five mana uh, has madness for X black black. Put three black zombie creature tokens onto the battlefield tapped, uh, and you gain three life. And then if it was paid for its madness cost, you instead... Put X dudes into play and then stream of life. Cool. So we, I was wrong about empty the pits, <laughs> and I mean I, I, I sure <laughs> as hell talked about how I was wrong. But this card, I think, is playable. It's f- one card, five mana, three dudes, six power total, and you gain three life. But the madness is actually like you madness stream of life. Like, is that not alright? Like, you, I mean, this card's garbage. Really? If yeah. you pay five mana, you're getting the same effect that you would if you paid five mana. So, to me, that seems like it's a bit underwhelming. It has a higher ceiling, but, um, I, I mean, is the madness really, like, I think realistically, or I think you're probably just getting, if you want a madness, this may be two zombies out of it. Let's, let's get down to brass tacks. Where's the ceiling here? Because we're talking about floorboards. <laughs> Uh, oh boy, uh, I'm uh, I'm surrounded by jokesters. Uh, yeah, I don't. I'm not super stoked on this one. 
I don't know. I think it's neat. I think, again, this might be the one where you're running, like, this discard-centric zombie deck that doesn't exist in the format right now, but maybe in the future would. And then maybe that's where this fits in. I was, I was thinking, thinking more blue-black control. Yeah, I was going to say control. Like, black, mono-black control, blue-black. Like, But I've, I've had my heart broken too many times by cards like this. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm willing to deal with the harsh reality... That these should probably stay underneath the floorboards. Air of Falconrath. 2 mana, 2 1. Discard a card, transform the air. It becomes a 3 2 flyer. Um, yeah, uh, discard that extra land to get a 3 2 flyer. Yeah. Seems pretty good in black. Yeah, and I think the other thing too you need to look at is like you don't necessarily need to be discarding. Okay, so in black, keep in mind that discarding is, is like something that you generally. I, I, I think it's like. You get to discard it. It's not like you're forced into it or anything like that. You're building your deck around the fact that you're discarding cards. Like, that's an advantage. It's not a disadvantage. It's not card disadvantage. I mean, it technically is, but at the same time, like, black utilizes that zone. So, either way, it's a 3-2 flyer for a discarded land. Like, that's very strong. I think any of the um, black-based aggressive decks benefit from having evasion and uh, being able to have a 3-2 flyer on... Turn two, uh, an attack swing in on turn three is pretty strong. Yeah, agreed. And if you're, if it's any color that doesn't mind discarding cards, it's going to be black, right? Like you have cheap cantrips, bobs, uh, all the bob, the bob variants, knights, whispers, and Frexian arenas <coughs> that you will be getting lands that you do not need. And yeah. this is a great way of getting rid of it. And there are not many utility lands because you have, like, I imagine you'd want to reliably cast Rolf's Messenger. And maybe Obliterator at the top, so you only play a couple of utility lands that you want to get. So, yeah, basically you will have extra basics to flip this guy. Mind Rack Demon. Two and two blue for a 4-5 Flying Trample. When it ETBs, you put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. And then at the beginning of your upkeep, if you do not have Delirium, you lose four life. This guy was spoiled in the... Uh, ghouls versus goblins. It was the very first whatever. Old card. I don't know what it was. Blessed versus cursed. The yeah. dual deck. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. Do you ride this demon? Is this a demon you want to play in ancient tomb? Um, I've sort of come back around on this card. Like I think that like, I, first of all, I don't think it's like the ace in the hole on that list. Not at all. But I, I, I mean, I'm I'm fine paying four mana for a four or five flyer with flying and trample. The real question here is like whether or not you have delirium. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a deck building d- consideration less than it is a like a creature consideration here. Yeah. I, so I think I think with cards like this, I mean I've been racking I've been racking my mind for a long time, but why wizards keep trying to print these four mana dominant black flyers with some sort of downside. Yeah. And I, I think one one day they're gonna print one that's too good and the downside is not that bad. Yeah. And this one is the one that I think is the closest closest uh not to not not if it was a six six then it would be too way good, way too good. good obviously yeah but uh you know they keep trying to print the same style of card for cmc they're flying demons yeah. and this one's the one where i'm like that's actually made me pause and think is this going to replace the episode persecutor in some of these black suicide decks and yeah. maybe i don't know we'll see i'm surprised that so like you so the the ones we're talking about is obviously desecration demon we're also talking about Vissel Persecutor, and then the most recently printed one where it like flips your library into I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think that, that card's dirt. So, like, and then there's this guy which doesn't necessarily have a drawback if played correctly, versus the other ones which have definite onboard disadvantages. Mm-hmm. Desecration Demon. Sometimes you just can't attack with them, and never will be able to attack with them. Uh, Abyssal Persecutor, well, I mean, you can't win the game, so... Uh, <laughs> so much removal, you just don't think. Well, you, yeah, you run sack outlets. Although, if we're talking four mana demon, I think the art of this one's pretty sweet. It's pretty metal. Yeah, this guy's badass, man. I mean, he's a demon. So, does he stomp, though? <laughs> yeah, I think he bumps in the whip. I, I, <laughs> I think he's, he's whip bumpable. <laughs> um, Pale Rider of Trostad. Two for a 3-3 three, three, Skulk. When it enters the battlefield, discard a card. 
Uh, aggressive black decks, maybe black red decks, uh, maybe the aggressive black green deck with like Lothlith Troll. Oh, stuff, hell yeah. Where you can take advantage of actually discarding the card. The one thing, we talked about this before we recorded, is that every other time they printed a card like this, uh, Drekavac comes to mind, cards <laughs> like Hidden Horror. Yeah. They always had, you had to sacrifice it if you didn't discard a card. So if you're Hellbent and you draw this guy and you slam him, you don't have to sacrifice anything. No. You go to discard a card and you don't have any. Yeah, so he's awesome on the top deck, or basically, um, he 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 gets in for damage if they have bigger creatures. Which I mean, you're playing an aggressive black deck, so if you're playing the creature matchup, you probably will be in a situation where this guy uh, is getting in for for free damage. And uh, again, he's another discard outlet. Play your advantageous one mana reanimates on your reasonably sized dudes. Yeah, you know, like play more value reanimators. It's cards you know? like this and the uh, the flip flyer that make unearth even more appealing in a deck like uh, mono black for sure. Um, but uh, let's. I mean, this card probably pales in comparison to the the next two drop in black we have. It's Relentless Dead. So, black, black for a 2-2 zombie with Menace. And then a couple of other abilities. Yeah. Uh, when Relentless Dead dies, you can pay one black. If you do, return to your hand. Okay. Uh, when he dies, you can also pay X. If you do, return another target zombie card with CMC X uh, from your graveyard to the battlefield. So this guy, early on, he's just a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two with evasion, and if they don't kill him right away, just keep up one black to keep playing him. Um, if they don't kill him right away and you end up getting a bunch of other mana and you have other zombies that have died, maybe your Dross Messenger, or you had to discard something, ah, you can get it back. Like, this guy isn't, I, he's not as exciting as I think everybody kind of made him out to be, like... He's pretty exciting. Well, I, I think, think he's bad. You think he's bad? Really? See, I, I, I don't think, think he's, he's bad. I think he's bad. I think he's medium. Medium at best. I mean, he's a mythic zombie with a bunch of relevant abilities, and I think that's why everybody got super excited. Like, people love the idea that mono black aggro can actually exist in this kind of format, right? Do you guys not agree, though, that this is one of the best cards in that list, though? I think it absolutely is. It's... Mm. I, I just, whenever I look at this card, I can kind of compare it to Blood Gas, and I'm thinking if I'm in a black aggressive show, I'd rather have the Blood Gas most of the time. Because this requires so much mana for it to be good. It's nice that it has a pseudo evasion in the Menace, but I, I mean, sure, this card gets into a mono black aggro. I'm not denying that at all. I think it's definitely, like, good, but I'm not, I'm not super stoked, and I'm not. I uh, think this is like one of my high draw picks. Yeah, I think if you if you build mono black aggro and you don't include this, that's incorrect. I agree. For sure, but, but I don't think like to me that deck too is it's not about what creatures you have. It's about the it's, existence of them at all. That you mm -hmm. yeah, it's just you're using removal and hand attack that says I don't care what you are, I'm getting rid of you, and then you have to supplement that with creatures that doesn't muck up your mana. So then you get to play cards like this. To me, the only card in that deck in mono black. That is like, wow, that's a really good card. It's just Geralt's Messenger. I, I think this kind of card's kind of neat. And so this is this is like magical Christmas land. And I totally realize that this is idyllic. But I am super about this card with Contamination. And there's another, a bunch of like cards like this that like sort of don't exist that are just like free roll and now I win the game because I have these two cards in play. I, I totally, like I admit that that's crazy town, but... That's like one of my favorite card combos, and they just keep printing cards that work with contamination, so yeah, I'm happy. You know what's funny? I think this guy might just be a lot better on the defense. Mm -hmm. Like in a deck, like if you're playing yeah, sure. Hawks, like right? Because he can block. Yeah. And a lot of these other creatures can't block. The and he ones can that die recurrently. Yeah. Like, yeah. And if you <clears> need <throat> him to kill a Planeswalker, he can, because he's got Menace. He's going to jump around. Or if somebody double blocks, you're in black. So we have the opportunity to kill one of their other blocking creatures and then blow them out. See, that makes that makes a lot more sense to me, because I was trying to... The black black makes it very restrictive. It's hard to play in a Jund aggro. Um, not impossible, just hard. And then you're more likely to say, I mean, you're mono black, maybe black red aggro. So I'm looking at this in a vacuum. It's like, well, it's a two two with pseudo evasion, but there's no haste. It doesn't have high power. Yeah. Um, you have to have mana open for the other two abilities, and usually in aggressive decks, you're tapping out a lot. Yeah. So you have to have the mana up. So what, like, if they play a removal spell or a sweeper on their turn after you play this, you don't get value. Um, so what what happens? You play this two two evasion creature. I, I just look at this and I'm like, oh for sure. Like I think if you're playing mono black aggro, 
uh, and you don't include this, it's incorrect. You should th- be playing it. But. I think he's. I agree though. I think he's kind of an attrition card, and I also think that he is. Um, like obviously, once he hits the bin, he's there for good. Like if you can't pay the cost, he's gone. But the art is sick. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that it's an homage to Endless Ranks of the Dead was one of the one oh, of the yeah. first cards I oh, saw, and I was just like, so oh beautiful. my god, the carryover from one set to the next, and the artwork has been a real big plus for me. That's the best part about this set is that when I see cards that are like, ah, I think this is overhyped, or ah, this card won't get played. It's, there's just too much competition. The flavor. The flavor of it and like it, the way that the abilities work is super cool. Yeah. And just like the art is fantastic. This is, su- this is, yeah, I'm excited to play with these cards even if I don't think they're good, which is something that will definitely happen because this happens with every set, right? A new set comes out, people want to play with these new cards even though they end up not being the correct decision, but it's hard to judge whether or not cards are, you know, really the right choice, especially when you have literally every card in the game at your disposal. Totally. Right? But this one, I think, will people will definitely fall victim to this, uh, that, the most in this set, because the yeah. start, cards are so cool, and they'll want to play these cards, and they'll be like, oh, wait, this is garbage, but check out this art. Or, like, I opened a foil, might as well. You might fall victim to him, but he can't be the target of victim of night. All right, well, I'm going to take that joke to the slaughter and move on to the next card. (laughs) To the slaughter. (laughs) Um, Speaking of slaughter, this card kills me how bad it is. Uh, It's two and a black for an instant. Target player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. Oh, so, Ben, is this a good tribute to hunger? Um, and then it has Delirium. If you have Delirium, they sacrifice both. So with Delirium, this card's playable. Without, I actually think this card is just awful. So I'm going to jet in here. Uh, this is pretty much only playable in a an attrition list, I think, again. Because it's a list that fills up the bin really quickly. And you want both of those things really badly in that list. I, that's my extent of the... Like, I don't think this card is super good. I think it's on. It, you can turn this card on in those lists. Yeah, because like, if they don't have a Planeswalker and they have a creature... Wait, did I just get that wrong? Like, anyway, it's three mana. It's three mana. Yeah, but it's, it's, an, like instant. it's, a, it's an instant. Sure. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I just think there are better options for removal. I think in like, maybe like the some sort of yeah pox lists that Adam knows more about than I do, but I think it's one of those cards where... Because his player gets selection. Yeah, it's that's true. Not as powerful. Fair enough. Speaking about this powerful, card bombs, dude. This, this card, card bombs. So I hard. hate how good this card is, <laughs> even though it's so basic. Falcon Wrath Gorger, Ronda Red, folks. This is a two-one for red. That's a vampire that says each vampire creature you own that isn't on the battlefield has madness. Madness is equal to its mana cost. So wait, Ben, you're saying that they finally printed a Jacklepop that doesn't have a downside? No, it's a Savannah Lions with an upside. What in red? What? This is this is like red's dryad militant. Right? This is not it. That's not an upside. It's a fucking two-one for one. There's no uh, upside on this card. I, I can't. I, like I think that's that's so magical Christmas land on this card. Like, it's a two one for one. It's a two yeah. one for one. But in red, honestly, yeah. they they've always wanted a two one for one that had no downside. Totally. I mean, like what Zergo? Did Zergo have a downside? He yeah, couldn't he can't block. block. Yeah, this guy can block. He blocks for a weekend. Yeah, but who the blo- whole weekend? Who blocks in red? <laughs> well, sorry. Correction, everyone. Zergo can block. It's just he, yeah, he just he should. barely can. Yeah, should. But okay. not that red's blocking very often. Will this ability come up often? Probably not. But the fact that it can and people sure. will forget I admit it. that. And nobody who's going to play around this? Who's going to have like you'll against you'll be against black red or something, and you'll be like, okay, uh, he's got this two one, but I have this him to Torak. He's got mana open. Vampire X Men. Yeah, yeah. Kill your friends. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody does that. Or oh yeah. my god, they have a Liliana and they take up. Yeah. <laughs> you discard Vampire X Men. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, two one for one with an upside. Uh, play it in red and red aggressive decks. Moving on. Uh, Gold Knight Castigator. Two and two red for a four nine flying haste. If a source would deal damage to you, it deals double that damage to you instead. If a source would deal damage to it, it deals double that damage instead. People are going to play this, and I think it's pretty bad. Um, when you tap out for a four nine and you attack them, you a lightning bolt does six damage. Yeah. A it, wild Nicodle the six damage. It doesn't die to flame slash, which is kind of interesting. However, okay, so but this kind of falls. 
the, I think this card, unlike the demon we were talking about earlier, this card is far more dangerous than that card. Yes. Like, four mana, for losing four life on your on your upkeep because you're an idiot and you didn't fill your bin is one thing. Dying to, like, t- a kitchen finx uh, that's clocking in for six the next turn, like, that's big problems. Yeah, though, I like, don't know. you cannot play this against red. Or goblins. Oh no! Oh god! Or no. anything with reach. Yeah. Like you can't. You can't. I would even be scared to play this against a, an aggressive deck with cryptic command, right? Because you like play this and you, maybe you have some blockers back or whatever, and they're just like, nope, tap down your dudes, crack for twenty, right? With a, a fin horn elf and a mantis rider. That was just a jab at Spencer, who's now sucking on his sweaters. Uh, <laughs> where does this card fit? I don't. I don't know if this hot card has a place. I think I know where it fits. Right in the in dollar. The dollar <laughs> <room>. <laughs> uh, we have fun here. Uh, moving on. Oh, but actually, before we do, this is a card that I bet somebody will die to. Oh, I, we on. should have made a ticker because there's so oh, many cards that, stuff that we were talking about <laughs> yeah. before. Cards that I'll die to. Gold Knight Cascader. I'll be playing a deck that. With low removal, and I'll just yeah. look at that thing and just go, damn it. Yeah. Damn it. I can't damn believe it, I lost to that shit. Yeah, we should have, like, a, next time we do one of these, we should have, like, a tinger up, the, like, a little a thing that says, like, Spencer dies to this. When it comes up, it's like, bing! There's, all, you know, I mean, like, there's always posts. Yeah. Making fun got, of me is uh, kind of like a scourge on the magic community. Yeah, but the community tends to wolf down that kind of content. We have Scourge Wolf, a 10 <laughs> 2 2 first strike wolf horror, Delirium. Uh, it has double strike instead. Uh, well, actually, no, because it has first strike and double strike. So does it deal first strike damage twice? Judge? No, but seriously, this card's trash. I think, I think this card is so bad. Uh, to, uh, people are hyping two, it up. Two level one judges, three council members can't figure out double strike. Who? Who? <laughs> yeah. Wow, well, you do the first strike damage, but there's two of it, so it's a double strike. Um, anyway. This card's bad. Yeah. Like, two red. Say why? No. Two red, two two with first it's, strike. Hate it. Blood Knight exists. Hate it. I mean, th- red, no. Red just has why was this? Drops. Why did this get so much hype? I it's a wolf know. horror, though, so it doesn't get bounced to your uh, thing in the ice. Does it? Um, well, are you having you done? I'm having no. a gas. Oh. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, controversy in a card. We have Sin Prodder, uh, or as the community has called it, Tybalt. I was going to say Rob. <laughs> oh, Rob. Rob, yeah, red Rob, because he's Red Bob. Red Bob huh. um, Robert. <laughs> Robert. He looks here. like a Robert. Well, no, but the thing is, Rob. Well, Rob is also Bob, right? Bob, short for Robert. Yeah. Uh, I know. I know this because my father is uh, named Robert. <laughs> it's it's a long story. So can we call him Dick? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, unless they come out with like Tom, and this guy can be Dick, and then we would be the Harry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyways, about this bad card. Uh, two and a red for a three-two menace. It's a devil, and it has at the beginning of your upkeep. Reveal the top card of your library. Any opponent may have you put that card into your graveyard. If a player does, Sin Prodder deals damage to that player equal to that card's converted mana cost. Otherwise, put that card into your hand. So, yeah, we have a 3 man. mana 3-2 three body. Which, I mean, it's got 3 power at 3 mana, but that's all it's got going for it. Well, Menace. It's got, oh, sure, I was going, I was going to get to Menace. Menace makes that, you know, more tolerable. For sure. sure. Yeah. But there's, I mean, there's a 3 mana 3 2 menace that saw no play, rightfully so. But he, the actual ability, and obviously why we're all here, is because at the beginning of the upkeep, it either domes them or you draw a card. So I think a lot of the time this will just reveal a land, they'll be in your land, and then you'll draw a card. So maybe that filters you out in certain decks. Uh, I think there's some decks that maybe want that. And are looking to deal damage. I'm mostly thinking of John Dagro and Red Green Aggro. Yeah. Where you know you top the curve at three or four, you get three or four lands in play, and you're, you don't need those additional lands. And if they're binning spells and you're doing damage and you're playing incinerates already, and you're you know looking for lightning bolts and things like that, then I think this ability is okay. And I think it replaces cards like Fanatic of Xenagos, <laughs> but buried. I right. Think- yeah, I think this card suffers from a similar uh, issue with one of the previous cards. Do you remember when we covered Aberracious Dragon? Yeah. I feel like this card suffers from a very similar situation to Aberracious Dragon. Like, Aberracious Dragon, I think, was like a 4-5 or, or something like that. It was a 4-4 four, for four, 4. 4 4 for 4 And this guy's a... I mean, he might have that card at flying. But this card was Menace, and it's a 3 
I don't know. It technically draws cards, but I, I don't know. Like, they're going to always choose the thing that benefits them the most, right? Well, you choose, right? Oh, is that... Sorry, hold on. Any opponent may have you put that card into your... No, they choose for you. They choose. They oh, choose sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this as if my opponent has it, because there's no way I would like, play this card. If they see a land, they go, okay, do you, so I either take none or give you this filter that land so that you draw potentially maybe not another land? Like... I don't know. Is this card good enough as a 3-2 with a menace? I think that's the real thing. No. Um, when this card came out, I, I, I said, and I, I'm going to rescind this statement, I said that, like, hey, you can play this off of an Ancient Tomb and a Mox or, like, something like that. I don't actually think 3 power is enough to merit that, and and I don't know. I, I just, I don't, I like this card less than when I saw it, and I didn't like it when, it, when I saw it at all. 2 really. toughness is the big Oh, thing. yeah. Dice to everything. Yeah. 3-3 three, three would be... Maybe we would have more of a discussion a about it. Very different discussion. And I don't <laughs> think that's too greedy, which is something that I think will come up. Like people have said, like, what do you what more do you want from this card? And I can't give a direct answer to that, but I know that this just like the design there has to something would have to change to make this card. Haste. Play. They give it haste and there's a whole different beast. Well, I, I would I rather be, take haste over menace. If it was haste over menace, I actually think this would be very yeah, good. This card yeah. would be quite good. Um I think my opinion, and I was just saying that it went from, when I first saw this and read it, I thought playable dot, and then I thought about it some more and went playable question mark, and I, I kind of stick with that. And I think that a lot of people think this jams into mono red, and I think that's actually wrong. Yeah, yeah totally wrong. Village Messenger. One mana, one, one, haste. It's a flip card. that has the beginning of each upkeep, if no spells were cast, you obviously flip it, and it becomes a 2-2 two, two with menace. This card is just like Reckless Wife. It's a trap. I got a message a, for you, red players. Don't play this. This, I think the thing about this card that is like the reason why it's such a trap is like if this is your turn one play, it is fine. If it is any other play in the game ever, it sucks like super huge. Like you should add a caveat that turn one play against an opponent that has no turn one plays. Yeah, Which you, you have to be on the play. Okay, yeah, you have to be on the play, and this has to be your turn one play. This, if that's the case, this card's fine. This, Otherwise, it's terrible. It's going to go through the same cycle Reckless Wave did. It'll come out. People are like, oh, this card's fine. They'll play it. They'll realize it's bad. Cut it. And then when people start playing red, like when they start playing Highlander, they're like, oh, Reckless Wave. That's a one mana creature I could play, and then it turns out they'll recognize it's bad. Yeah. So this will come out, some red deck wins players will play it and be like, okay, this is kind of, oh no, it's bad, and they'll yeah. stop playing it. Yeah. Uh, Hinterland Logger. Two mana, two one, that transforms into a four two with trample. Now... There's a lot of loggers in this set. Yeah, there way. is. There's like four. There's like lumberjacks, there, Yeah, there's a, there's a lumberjack creature that, uh, its creature type is just human. It's just a human, and it's just a logger. It's quite nice. Uh, this card is, I think this is also a trap. In that It's nice to think, like, in the Sorensen lists, or the Tempo lists, where you can play him, and pass, and keep up counter magic, and then, oh, I didn't do anything, and I got this 4 mana, or this 4-2, for 2 Ew. mana. Ew. It just dies to everything. They, they play it on turn 2. They, first they already, those decks already have a glut of good 2 green drops, such as Quirion, Fine Lasher, Kudzu, Mayor of Aberk, that if they want to play the pass, yeah, Tarm if they obviously, want, obviously Tarm of Wife basic, use, but. Yeah, basically Mare fills this role, and Mare is already this, like, eh, Yeah, those decks are sometimes not playing yeah. Mayor, and Mayor can be quite powerful. So. And I, I think there's a 2 drop for those decks that uh, is coming up oh, quite God. soon. That's isn't this like way worse? Like, I mean, for example, isn't that just like a terrible skin shifter? Like, isn't skin shifter like way yeah, better than that card? Yeah, I, I think I'd rather play skin shifter. Like, there are a bunch of cards. I don't even want to play skin shifter. Well, that's the thing. It's like all the cards that are like, oh, the, all the cards that were kind of just added to flesh out your two drop slot, uh, even the ones where you're like, eh, maybe this guy's not good anymore. They printed some pretty good three drops. Like, those guys are still better than the logger. Yeah. Um, blob. The Blob. Uh, it's three inexorable <laughs> Blob. Blob. Uh, three mana, three, three. Delirium. When it attacks, if they're, if you have Delirium, you get a three, three green ooze uh, token onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Now, it's a three mana, three, three, which that's pretty on par. It yeah. only costs one green. Yeah, big. And it starts putting in, yeah. uh... Like tokens that are tapped and attacking, which is pretty big. So I think it goes without saying this does not go in a green aggressive strategy at all. We are obviously this would be bad in those decks. Yeah. However, this is like a slam dunk auto occlude, and again that attrition list I keep on talking about. This card is insane in that list. 
Three mana, three, three. One green. The one green is huge. Uh, it makes dudes. And it makes dudes, and your, your, your bin is so full. It's been full since turn two. Like, like, I don't know, like, I'm stoked that there's these cards that I think that might be playable in this, like, green-black, potentially white attrition list. This card probably goes in other deck lists, but I want people to consider that that, that deck list has cards now. Like, they're, like, hell, you know, I it didn't used to have cards. It's interesting, I kind of see this card more in, like, a potential for some odd variants of a bug deck that maybe wants to play more threats. Hell yeah, why not? Um, that, but that's a slower deck plan, isn't it? Like, that's... That's the deck list that wants to play the mid range sort of like mid range where you're like playing a lot of counter spells. I, I I mean like I don't think the card's great. It doesn't like I'm not that excited. It's just one of those cards where I'm like, you know, eventually someone's gonna play it and it'll look good. Yeah. Yeah. Tarboy <laughs> Jr. Uh, Mold Graph Scavenger. It's two mana, zero four. Delirium, it gets plus three, plus zero. So if you have delirium, it's a three four goif. Jesus, this card sucks. I think this card is playable. <laughs> now it's not it's not terribly for sure, but I rather have this over logger, and I rather have this over um, like oh, those other cards. What's like the... for for Sorensen, and this goes back to like the thing in the ice thing, because I do believe that like the Sorensen list might want to run Thing in the Ice and this guy, because that's how those decks start to deal with the mid range menace. So those of you that don't know Sorensen's a blue green uh, tempo. Yeah, a blue green tempo that is very light, uh, plays a lot of counter spells, really efficient air quotes efficient creatures. Yeah, but now four, there are right? just like yeah, cards like this and Thing in the Ice have huge asses. They can block the three power creatures from mid range, so if they just wall. You know, they who wants to use a removal spell on this? Plus, what if they have Doran in play? I mean, then you're just laughing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is great in the Doran matchups. <laughs> hey, a lot of decks are playing Doran. Yeah, well, the guy's a house. Oh, it sounds like a, a tree guy. <laughs> the guy's a tree house, because that's what they called the tree. The He's deck. a big. Brick you house. house. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think this guy is fine. The fact that we're making these many jokes, I think, says all that we I need out of you to say yeah. about what we think of this card. This, this doesn't sucks. replace, like, Delve, uh, I Delve win Trample I a Wolf Highlander or... with this card sure. in my deck. You know what? I, I do think this card's playable, though, and I'll, uh, I'll agree that it looks it, like utter trash, and it takes a little bit of thought to think, you know, actually, this is a 3-4 for 2 isn't, in a lot of decks. Isn't this something you'd want in Pox over or the Attrition List over the Ooze? The Blob? No, no, because the blob is a, is runs the long. This doesn't. This the blob runs the long plan, right? It runs the attrition plan. This card doesn't run an attrition plan. It's just a big dumb idiot. It's not even a big dumb idiot. It's a. <laughs> this is a Benjamin says, Wheeler card. Next, I next, want it. Next, next, no, next, next. no, let it I'm be sorry. real. <laughs> uh, <laughs> seasons pass. Four green, green. Return any number of cards with different converted mana costs from your graveyard to your hand. Put seasons past on the bottom of its owner's library. Speaking of the past and seasons, there was once people in our format, yourself and Jeremy White, who used to play cards like Turbo Land or. Um, <laughs> heartbreak, heartbreak, heartbeat is great. Oh, and once upon a time, once upon a time, these decks were marginally playable. Does this get in those kind of decks? That's a deck of the past. Uh, probably not. I think those decks are pretty bad. <laughs> like, I mean, they're all right, but so, I don't think you'd want this. Is there like a six mana like draw six? Maybe ever, never, no, probably. never. This card's maybe like a six mana draw. Four. Read the runes with sapphire medallion in pay. I actually just don't like this card at all. Period. Yeah, <laughs> there was talk about it in Storm, but I think that was just trolling. Storm is gonna have a hard time creating double green. Yeah, they well, mana. Morphos. It's Phyrexis, and it barely is red. Like. I, don't know. I guess uh, this tireless tracker should have tried to track some better green cards for the set review. Eh? <laughs> uh, what's two and a green for yeah. three two? Uh, when a land ETBs under your control, you investigate. Whenever you sacrifice a clue, put a one one counter on it. Uh, uh, I mean, I guess it's fine. It's not bad. Play a fetch land. I think in like the rock, clues. black green, the rock. I think this is oh, playable. Oh man. Okay, so turn to Lotus Cobra. Nice. And then you just play a fetch land, landfall trigger, you cast this guy, you sack the fetch land, you get a clue. Sack the clue. The thing come, land comes in play, landfall trigger, so you get a clue, you get another a mana floating, and then you can tap the land that you just got to sacrifice the clue, and there you go, you got a three mana four three. Run it with. <laughs> <laughs> 
card. Yeah. Card. Yeah. Yeah. card. And yet, have a perfect setup. Okay. I mean, you could have played Garrick. This is another card that I don't know why people are actually so excited about because it seems very <laughs> this mediocre. The, this falls into my category of cards that people will, like the devil. People will play it. They'll realize meh. Some people keep playing it. Like even the more. golden situations don't seem that great. Yeah, like that. That was the nutter butter. I would call it what you just described. Yeah, that's the dream. That's, yeah, is that's a dream, the dream. Is a three man a four three? That draws you a card. Dream bigger, folks. <laughs> See, <laughs> Drino exists. You, you could have played Nissa or Garrick on that. I turn was just or... going to say, like, what three man a card? Like three man a green cards. Like, let's think about this for a second. Like. We got Just green. we got Nissa, we got Corsair of Crew Fix. I'm sure there are other cards. Like there are so many cards in green at three that do things. The problem is that this is the kind of card that doesn't belong in the elf decks. No, and no. it doesn't belong in the aggressive decks. So you're looking at okay, well, what are these? What are these? mid-range ramp decks, right? And they also just do better things. Yeah, so they I can play Nissa and Corsair. Good yeah, cards. Yeah. So I, think, I, uh, I mean, like, I think this is one of those things where it'll get played probably the Black Green Rock, and then maybe one or two of the Black Green Rock players will still play it, and it won't be awful. It'll just be meh. I think your assessment of it being in Rock is like probably. I think that's pretty accurate. I think that is one of the very few deck lists that wants to Which run this guy. Props, Alter, how he did say he tested it uh, in his deck list, and he really liked it. Okay, I that, I believe it. I mean, yeah, but how much testing can you have done? Well, I mean, goldfish testing whether or not it's playable. Okay, goldfish testing one afternoon. Not not to discredit Alice there, because the guy knows his rock. Yeah. But made him sound like a drug dealer. Yeah. <laughs> if he, well, if, <laughs> when Alistair says something's playable in the rock, I, I usually give him the yeah. benefit of the doubt. And then oh, I yes. thought about it, and I thought, you know, this card is something that I think the rock would, it does what it does, it blocks, maybe you get a couple clues. <laughs> no, that's good. This card's probably fine. Oh, uh, yeah. Move this to the dollar bin. Uh, traverse the Ulvenwald. One green. Search your library for a basic land. Reveal it. Put it into your hand. Shuffle your library. Delirium. You can get any land or a creature instead. Uh, I only think this card's playable in lands. That's so it. it's funny that the the artwork's kind of confusing, and it looks like they're lost in the Uvenwald, which traditionally is this mysterious woods. Because it was mysterious to me that some people were I thought were so effing lost, and I thought this card was great in a bunch of decks. <laughs> yeah, what, wouldn't <laughs> yeah. they like this to be playable? I uh, yeah, this deck this is this is super fringe playable, and in all the decks that are I'd say like tier one or tier two that play green, this doesn't go in any of them. It, yeah, it's, okay, it's a sorcery. It's one mana, it's one green mana. I, so I was talking to Derek about this, and originally when I saw this card, I was like, I don't like this. And he was like, hey man, I'd play this in my, um, uh, what is it, like, um, green, blue, white list, lands list. Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, I, I can see that. I thought about it a little bit. I mean, like, worst case scenario, you get a basic land. Later on, maybe you get like, your strip mine and lock them out of the game. Like, if you have life in the home going, chances are you can have delirium. Sure. Uh, it's it's a spell that you don't mind playing without delirium, because, I mean, your lands. If you want run one or two basics, yeah. the ability to just be like, well, I have this early, I don't want to lose to Blood Moon. Right? You right. Can, you can help yourself with that. But if you have delirium going, which, again... Not going to be that difficult in that kind of shell. Maybe you want to get a uh, Grazing Glade Heart or a Corsair of Crewfix so you can combo off. Or maybe yeah. you want to get um, I the, think it's a little bit fall. harder to get Delirium in that, that list than that. Like, I don't think it's the easiest. Well, if you if you have a Life from the Loam, You're, and you've dredged you 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 lands, been? you have the Sorcery, sorcery. Life from the Loam, you probably have an Artifact because you can play, like, Expedition Map... You play Engineered Explosives, Zurin Orb. Like, usually those, like, a lot of lands lists can also play artifacts that they can have, like, an Academy of Ruins package going on. Uh, or they have enchantments, because they might have milled their Fast Bond or their Mana Bond. Uh, maybe not Mana Bond. Fast Bond, Exploration, Burgeoning, like these cheap enchantments. Exploration. They could hit their uh, Abrupt Decay, Crop Rotation, uh, Punishing Fire. I like this, if you're talking about that list specifically, like, then I think that there's more, there's more talk now than ever than running cards like Grizzly Salvage, which, like, fill the bin up with things. Yeah, right, that still know. draw you a card. But, right? one, last, one last thing on that card, I just want to say that, although the, the ceiling can be high, and I think that when I think of, like, the tier one green decks, I'm thinking of 
the you know cradle hoof yeah. pattern rector yeah. and then all the slew of green mid range decks yeah. and I, and some green aggressive decks and all those all those decks don't, don't want this card no, never don't. but why is that even a but, discussion but I think there's maybe some bug mid range cards that might play it and then I think in like lands and some fringe strategies where this card is really good in those decks yeah. I think the the ceiling for those this deck and those or sorry this card in those decks is high and very playable yeah. I mean, moving on to another card that should never be played in Crater Hoof or Four Color Blood. <laughs> if or ever anything. there was a card that I would put on my ticker of cards that I will lose to, this is top top card. I will smack talk this card into the ground yeah, and, and then I will lose to it. Chris Sutherland will kill me with this card. I, I can guarantee you I will be uh, yeah in a smoldering pile after losing this card and I still don't think it's So good. it's another dumb Hydra, but thankfully this time it doesn't use plus one, plus one count. And let's talk about that phallic artwork. Like That is some weirdness going or on. Or let's not. Uvenwald <laughs> Hydra. Six mana. Power and toughness equals number of lands you control. It has reach. And when it ETBs, you find any one land put in the battlefield tap. So, like, this card is only... So, it, it's, it's half of a prime time. And people have been talking... It's not even half of a prime time. It's worse than prime time. It's, it's worse than six, half six. of a prime time. It's sure, sure as fuck not a 6-6. Six, six. Well, I mean, usually it's a, it could be a 4-4-5-5 four, four, five, five yeah. kind of thing. But yeah. it doesn't have trample. And it doesn't get a combo that can just beat... So many archetypes in the format doesn't even get your good like multiple good backup pieces, and the thing about Cradle Hoof slaps the shit out of your uh, Lightning Angel out of the sky though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> well maybe, but you got to keep in mind that Cradle Hoof uh, sometimes late game sure it does have lots yeah, of lands up, but, the, but it's, usually when it's powering out these six drops, it usually has three lands in place. Sometimes, how, how sometimes many, four. How many often games three. have you won? Because I've won at least five games with, with one, one or two, with lands. One or two lands. lands. Yeah, yeah and that yeah. happens. Like you, will the have deck has nuts. a low land count. Yeah. yeah, you will have nut querying uh, ranger or scrib ranger hands, and that's and, just the way it is. And, and that's wanna... why it dies to fork bull and arc trails and all and like uh, all these cards so badly is because it doesn't have any late game. Strategy, really, other well, than like resolve in prime time. Well, That's eventually, you game draw, sometimes your late game can revolve around planeswalkers and you can play the game differently. But that, this isn't a discussion about strategy. But it, it, this that deck has a very competitive six drop slot yeah. already. Yeah, it plays the best one in the game, Pringle Time, yeah, absolutely. And the deck kind of revolves around obviously its namesake uh, Cradle and powering out these huge threats. But the best, arguably, creature in the deck, not even arguably, is Primeval Titan. Yeah. And this doesn't do enough job of mimicking it. And the other six drops it likes to play are uh, have in like very relevant abilities, such as Rurik Thar. Yeah. Or even uh, some, yeah. sometimes in a meta, Bane of Progress. Rurik's six, right? Correct. Six. Yeah. 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 You you always have Prime Time. And then you get to... You should always have Rurik Thar. And then 6-mana Garrick. But then... Yeah, but you can't natural order for no. Garrick. What I'm trying to say is that creatures at, you at 6, at your, your creatures that are at 6 or greater, you have Prime Time, you have Crater Hoof, and you should have Rurik Thar. And then from there, you, you can add whatever you want, but do not double up. Because no, you do no. not need two Bane of Progresses. No. You don't need two Hornet Queens. You don't need a Woodfall Primus and a World Breaker or whatever. You can't natural order for a World Breaker, but that's a different story. So why the hell would you want this half-assed Prime to- I, it's, I hate so this card so discussing much. The, So discussing this deck and maybe like a Jund mid-range or a Rock deck, I still think this, this card's it's, bad. So why aren't you playing yeah, Prime Time? <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, because those Why? decks, those decks want to top off at six, maybe one, maybe two six drops. Yeah, and this one just doesn't compete with the Titans or even Warm Coil Engine. The, yeah, exactly. This is like if we want to have a colorless discussion about this, it's like, hey man, so I'm running Warm Coil Engine in my deck, uh, and I'm competing for the six slot. Should I be running Triskelion? You're like, no, no, no. no you shouldn't yeah. be. So like, I think we all we all like look at this and the 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 deck that you think the most it should go into is Cradle of. I think that two of us play a fair amount of elves and think that the card's not good in that. Yeah, agreed. Uh, but but I will lose to that card. Yeah, I, I will die. To I will die to an elf player, or Cradle of player that plays it, and I'll lose to it, and they'll get they'll just nut the other half of Thespian. Yeah, we'll lose to it, and somebody will be like, "Hey man, how is that stupid Hydra you have?" They're like, "Oh, it's good. I got to kill Spencer and Ben with it." Yeah. Like, wow, that's pretty strong. Oh, yeah, we should play it again. Yeah. And there's yeah. there's always that person that gets you with the card that you just smack talked, and I feel that because we smack talked it up so much, we'll, that notice we'll both lose to it. Yeah, we'll notice unless Some one we'll of us it. like double Judas's and plays it and then kills the <laughs> other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
This is one of my favorite cards in this set. Anguished Unmaking. One white and a black. Instant. Exile target. Non-land permanent. You lose three life. Doesn't matter. Doesn't... Three life? Never Doesn't matters. Doesn't matter. No, yeah. I've never cared. I've never cared Sweet. once in my life. I pay ten... What was it? I pay ten <laughs> life on the <laughs> weekend. <laughs> I'll pay it on Monday. <laughs> uh, First of all, without even discussing this card's abilities... The artwork, the flavor, oh the God. flavor text, oh, sweet. Yeah. This card's, oh. So yeah, you've got Soren here who <laughs> has to uh, banish a Vassin. Guys, we're at, being, should we even do this? Well, let me yeah, no, we can. We're at an yeah. hour and a half. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got, we got going. Okay, All right. so this is a three mana Vindicate, uh, instant speed, hugely relevant, doesn't hit lands. Not quite Vindicate. Loses, uh, more not of quite, an utter end. It's an utter end for three mana. Um... I'm going to be playing the shit out of this. I think this card is exceptional. Uh, I think it is its premier removal. Uh, the three life, like I've already expressed, like rarely matters. Hmm. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm into this card. I'm, I sing <clears throat> its praises. I, I think this is one of the best removal spells they've printed recently. So, to foil a lot of the hype, uh, as I know Adam's really into this card. Yeah, I think, I think the Tell card. Tell me the bad, how bad I it think is. this card is really good, but three life... A, this isn't Vindicate. Vindicate often targets lands, just for the record. Yes, uh, it does. So, non lands, more like Utter End. Utter End's very powerful, and this is a powerful effect. Often, this will probably get creatures or planeswalkers, sometimes artifacts. Yeah. Um, three life in a lot of the decks I think will be playing this is relevant, though. And I think that that's something that, you know, you have to look at that. It's uh, it's not, you know, mean sure. Like, this is obviously better than cards like Maelstrom Pulse, um, etc. But. The three life matters, and the non-land part matters, and although the slam gets in those decks, and I think that it's very powerful, I just want to say, like, this three life is important. A lot of, this deck, I think, goes in a lot of mid-range decks, and a lot of those mid-range decks, the way that they kind of maintain the game state is usually through some sort of life game, mm -hmm. and that's, or else that's how they lose to the swarm strategies, or the aggressive decks, the red decks. And three life is not, that's not small. So if you're running incidental life game, are you uncomfortable with this in your list? I, mean, I, I think in Abzan they already have a lot of life game because they're rhinoing and then finxing and stuff and Kalidas. And like, this card is great in that deck, but I'm just, I'm just saying, this card's great, it's wonderful, sure, you're playing it, but you know, just, you gotta you play it. So, so play in it. the mid-range decks, or the tempo decks, so like uh, Esper or Dark Jeskai, the, the life that you lose from this doesn't... You guys hate the Dark Jeskai. I hate that I so know. much. Well, I'm not going to say a goddamn <laughs> Nephilim. <laughs> Please do. Please do. Just once. Um, in your Tiller Egg, I'm like, <laughs> Thank no. you. Okay. So in those decks, the fact that you're losing three life, that doesn't matter. Because you play all this incidental life gain on these great creatures, right? Like Seeker of the Way is one of the best creatures in these lists. Soulfire Grandmaster. Batter Skull, Soulfire Grandmaster, Lightning yeah. Helix, War Leader's Helix. Like you have all of these cards that are so good, and you're willing to pay life. Like even if you didn't even if you only see one of these, like three life does not matter. You have you can play Death Rite Shaman. Have a Tropical Island for a Death Rite Shaman. Stay a while. Like this card, the life loss does not matter as much as I think you guys are making it out to be. I, I, I'm just, I'm just well, dialing, I, I I'm the only person that says it matters. I'm yeah. just dialing it back. It's just like Dismember, where I'm like, this is an extremely powerful card. Just slam, get in a bunch of these decks. But the life loss matters. It doesn't not matter. I'm just saying, let's just take it back from 10, 10 fan person. Oh, and yeah. And just it's, say, it's 9.9, 9. 9, like there's a cost yeah, here. Yeah, no, this is you like, know, like not 9, a 9 10, 10. It's not like no, the second even. coming of Vindicate. Well, it's close. But it's not. It's not real. Is but it? instant. Yeah, instant. Exciting. Is huge. You can pass. Like you go two drop. Pass. I'm just trying to foil for Adam. So all three of us are just like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I don't. I totally like. I think there needs to be that. Like, um, like, hey man, let's reel this one back in because I'm not. I'm sure as fuck not going to be reeling it back in. I'm hype train, but I appreciate the fact. And I do agree. I, three three life is. No one's saying this card was bad. Yeah. No. But well, there was, some people were, but. Who? I don't, and don't, don't name I'm names, but they're, they're crazy. Yeah. Um, that card is bananas. We'll all see play. It's it's one of the definite auto includes in all your right, but, but we're fanboying, so let's move on to a card that we won't fanboy as much about. No, we can Just fan girl. kidding. It's Arlen <laughs> Cord. Uh, so Arlen is a fantastic planeswalker from this set. Two green and a red. Three loyalty to start. And has plus one until end of turn... Up to one target creature gets plus two, plus two, and gains vigilance and haste. Not bad. Uh, and then has zero. Put a two-two wolf creature onto the battlefield, and you transform her. So her flip side has uh, plus one 
Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain trample into an end of turn. Nice. So the whole board... Uh, a whole, your the flip side's pretty good, except for the art. I don't mind the arts. Like, it's not a knock... Okay, don't interrupt. <laughs> uh, minus one, Arlen deals three damage to a creature or player, and then she flips back. And then minus six, you get an emblem with creatures you control have haste and have tap, uh, deals damage equal to its power to target uh, creature sure, or player. Sure. Chris so, Chris. sure, whatever. Uh, but she has four very relevant abilities Absolutely. for the colors that she's in. <clears throat> There's not much to say about her, right? I mean, like, this is... She fucks... <laughs> I wanted to keep this wow. a PG. Yeah, you you <laughs> dropped several. I, I swear, I swear. I'm a swear. What are you? What are you gonna? Yeah, we're oh. trying to get on the mothership. God damn. No, man. Um, oh god. Anyways, anyways. Um, so Arlen Court. I mean, you, obviously, you're looking at this in the four drop slot of red green X decks, or just straight red green. And yeah, she's a slam dunk. I think like she competes a little bit with Hummaster and Xenagos. More Xenagos than Hummaster. Hummaster is extremely powerful in those decks. Um, she's she's definitely very very good. A plus. Um, she slams those decks. I think sometimes you don't want to cut Xenagos for her, so you maybe have to c- cut a Flame Tongue Cavu or some other four drop because the four drop slots in those decks are pretty competitive. Yeah, like but, the, uh, the decks that play uh, the decks that Absolutely, really, but you know, not the turning unit. The decks that really take advantage of Xenagos as like a, a fair card, right? Mm-hmm. Like I don't, make, want, I don't want I don't want her. In, I don't want her in Cradle Hoof. But no. um, I think she definitely competes with him in four color blood or three color mid range kind of decks. Absolutely, I sh- she's cool, man. She goes in all directions. She is. She is just. I think the thing, big thing about her is she's just like tactically. She's such a crazy wizard. Like she does so much. She makes two twos. She makes things get bigger. She gives vigilance. She gives haste. She gives trample. She um, she uh, honors the, your entire team. She kills things. Uh, her minus six is less relevant, but like, holy smokes! No, Four mana. She does it all. Extremely powerful. You're, you're, if you're in red green, you should play this card. Yeah. Also, uh, shout out to Wizards for uh, putting out like an older female character that isn't supposed to be like this battle, this battle worn like knight. That is like just a healer. Like, yeah. yeah, or yeah. that like wise isn't, old woman. Yeah, just like this, she just ripped she, shit up. Yeah, she just yeah. looks. I mean, just like everything about this card is so great, and she she looks like Cat uh, Stark. In my opinion. Catelyn Stark. I agree with that actually yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Cool, um, man. Stoked about this card. Awesome. Uh, On to <laughs> speed. And, yum, 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 and now back to everybody's favorite segment: cards that'll kill Spencer. <laughs> I'm gonna lose this card, and I hate it. Ooh, Ooh. the Gilrog monster. Gitrog. <laughs> is it Gitrog? Gitrog. Ooh, the Gitrog monster. This is the kind of card that Surge and all the Rock players, or Surge playing some weird lands interaction strategy, and all the Rock players just jam to their decks and proceed to decimate me with. Uh, it's a 6-6 six, six for 5. Why does it have touch? Death Touch? Because it's, it's... So relevant. It's so, so relevant. Let's talk about the card. So 5 mana, 6-6, six, six, Death Touch, Legendary Frog Horror. Oh, it's Legendary. Yeah. I didn't know that. At the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice the monster unless you sacrifice a land. You may play additional land on each of your turns. Whenever one or more lands are put into the graveyard from anywhere, draw a card. So, lands? Uh, anybody? Lands? It is a reverse Horn of Greed with a body. For five. <laughs> uh, mm. <laughs> uh, mm. Obviously, you look at you look at this creature and you think uh, a little bit of Titania. Yeah. Um, and how... Princess and the Frog. The Princess and the Frog. Uh, I was trying to set you up for that. Oh. Um, <laughs> Did this eat Thalia? Stop it. Oh my god. Stop it. I am not ready. <laughs> you know... It's it's if this was six mana I think it'd be garbage but because it's five mana I think it's uh, playable <laughs> and that's it folks your lands like does a six x for five with death touch that enables okay let's stop cards? let's stop bringing up death touch when is this death touch gonna be relevant um, when you're running into all these stupid Eldrazi that have a million toughness and no power what? trades with world breaker or kills world breaker kills oblivion sower you just got wrecked on camera my friend. <laughs> I don't know. I think like Death Touch. I mean, if if the six six doesn't kill it dead, the Death Touch sure will. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I can't think probably, of too many. I it's, can't think, it's the least important mechanic on this. Maybe card maybe for when sure. maybe when they're quite silly and they're multiple blocking with their 
I don't know, various creatures. Is that Thalia's arm in there? Stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, they no, that's that's Thalia's <laughs> lieutenant. <laughs> moving on, moving on. The in, her invocation of Saint Traft. So I guess wizards learned a lesson with guys of Saint Traft having hex proof that it was too good. Yeah. So this is yeah. their Dial homage, and this is one of the best parts of the set is that they they made an homage to so many of this the f- extremely flavorful and popular cards, and uh, yeah. I, is it's, that, it's, so that's guys just having a, yeah, a carefully placed steady. loving hand on the <laughs> Wait, now. Yeah, uh, is that right. is that Audric's mother or sister or daughter? At least he didn't say Thalia. So <laughs> is that Thalia's that ghost? Costs, it's an aura that costs <laughs> three and it's enchants a creature. When an, an enchanted creature basically has the geist ability. Yeah, yeah. Um, Without the good good. Would you play this in Bant Blade? Oh, Kata told me not to call it that because what? she didn't. Well, Kata hates the idea of Bant Blade. Because she thinks Stoneblade players in Legacy are like, they're like somebody going to a really nice Japanese restaurant and being like, "Hey, do you guys have chicken fingers?" Like that's what Stone <laughs> that's what Stoneblade is in Legacy. Yeah, right. But I, I I'm not making that comparison because of the blade decks. Well, no, that's what I said. Decks. But she hates it. She chewed me out. She sent me a message being like. Change this immediately. I don't want to be associated. <laughs> it's too with... bad, Kata. You're gonna have to come and start repping Bant. I'm the, I'm the latest Bant player in town. So. <laughs> oh, it's like you and Noel. Yeah. There's a few other players that have yeah. picked up. What? The deck's good. Uh, so if you're asking me, in Bant Blade is this card playable? I think it uh, it gets in. Like the aggressive, like Silver Blade Paladin. Absolutely, Bant. and also the one that's you're just playing a bunch of protection creatures. Yeah. Can't you just toss this on like a one one flyer too, and literally win with the game with that one one flyer? And then get blown out. When you get it deleted, I mean, worst so case you scenario, think this has to go on something with it ha- this. This this well, lives no. to go on like Thrones or like Paladin sure. and Vex and things. Oh, like yeah, that. like it's best on like a Soltari. It's like on a Soltari priest or something, right? But yeah. at the same yeah. time, like if they're tapped out and you decide to jam this in blue white skies, like it's three mana deal for. And this is playable, but it's not great. Yeah, I yeah. mean, really, really, the most playable enchantment uh, Ara is Rancor. Yeah, yeah. Agree. oh for sure, obviously. Oh, and he, but but even that barely makes it in a lot of these aggro decks. Right? Disagree. I think Rancor. Rancor. I used to hate it that card. It gets in it, but it, it, it gets in. There are two enchantments sure. that if you're on green creatures, you are always playing. Sylvan Library, Sylvan Library and Rancor. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, New just, yeah, disappointment. Yeah. The harbinger of awesome art and awful planeswalker. I don't even like the art so much. She's like walking away from the explosion. Like, isn't that like a meme? Yeah, it's something only cool guys do. <laughs> and something about Lonely Island in 2009 was a different. Sorry, story. Not, it's not, nice not to see Stone. It's nice to see Stonebridge Mystic all grown up and getting a sweet new haircut. <laughs> okay, so two wavy, <laughs> two red and a white, four loyalty mm. plus two. Discard a card. If you do, draw a card. Uh, minus two, exile target enchantment, tapped artifact, or tapped creature. And then minus eight, search your library for an artifact or creature card, put it on the battlefield, shuffle your library, it gains haste, return to your hand at the beginning of the next time. So just like its plus ability doesn't do that much. Its minus ability requires tapped, which like I guess it's kind of cool, but it doesn't trump the big ass threat they just played. Yeah. And then its ultimate is stupid and I hate it. I don't know. What are you I talking about? The ultimate? You can get, get um, Rakul? Oh, sick. A red-white deck that plays Emrakul? Nice. Yeah, um, actually, I, you know what's funny is I can see this deck in this the, this card in a deck that you play, some sort of five-color cascade with some big dumb idiot. I've moved on. There are just so many good Planeswalkers right now. Why would you play this garbage? I don't... I mean, it, it does plus two, but I don't think its abilities are actually... Yeah, it's like, oh, oh, yeah. like, its loyalty is high. That's yeah, what I'm sure, going sure. for. And the fact that it can hit artifacts, creatures, and enchantments, but the tap thing... Like, I get it. It's like this vengeance, right? She's Isn't that what she wants? Vengeance? She's not a Johnny's vengeance. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I this forgot one. about this one. Yay! Olivia, mobilized for war. That's her name? That's a cool name. Uh, one black red. <laughs> I, I just never. I always. I thought she was meddling good. mage. Olivia, the war. <laughs> and I'll just say Olivia, and then you'll be like, which one? Olivia. No one plays meddling mage. Highlander. Olivia, Moving on. Olivia enraged. Uh, so it's a three mana three three flyer that has whenever uh, another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can discard a card, any card. 
and any kind of creature. Yeah. If you do, you put a 1-1 one, one counter on that creature for some goddamn reason, it and it haste. gains haste until end of turn. It becomes a vampire as well. So, if it just gave haste, this card would still be great, right? Yeah. But it gets bigger, Yeah. and it gives it haste. And like it's a counter, not nuts. until it Yeah, and it has flying. I can't wait to give my own demigod of revenge <laughs> a plus oh, one. Two, plus two. Two. <laughs> no, okay, just, but I, no, this is a three mana three three flyer that gives every creature you're bound to play haste and makes them bigger. It like she's awesome, man. She's totally. she's a super great mid range card. I and think. and most importantly, those colors do not have a lot of good three drops. I This is an auto-include in the deck I'm playing right now. Yeah. Like, I, I want to look at this card. I think, like, Jund, even maybe some sort of Grixis, Red Black. Yeah. And those decks, kind of, when you lay out their spread, their, their CMC, their three drops are kind of lacking a lot of the time. So yeah. this is just a slam dunk. It's, it's this kind of card that makes me actually believe that Jund aggro could be a thing. Because I've always said that deck's crap. You've really put, I won with it a few times. The deck's crap. I don't. I've never seen. I have not seen proof of that. Uh, I will need a birth certificate. You know, you My say name is you're John, whole, and I was born in the fields of Lara. You say you're Hawaiian, but are you really? Yes. Uh, uh, Soren Grin Nemesis. <laughs> Nobody's favorite Soren. So six. I hate this art for starters. Yeah, I mean, this is another. This is another one like walking away from the destruction yeah. art. This, I, I'm just going to cover this. For, uh, six mana. Uh, it's four colorless, uh, one white, one black. I won't play it. <laughs> it uh, starts with six loyalty. Uh, so it's plus one is uh, reveal the top card of your library and put that card uh, into your hand. Each opponent loses life equal to the CMC. Minus X is Sword and Grim Nemesis deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker and you gain X life, so it's a drain life effect. And then minus nine is put a number of one white black vampire and eight creatures tokens on the in the battlefield with lifelink. Equal to the highest life total among all players. So, I I think this card exclusively goes in like some really weird control lists. I think it maybe goes in a stacks list. So you plus one, you draw whatever it is on top of your library, and hopefully you're running like Ugin. But and then what, you just jolt them. I might it's be literally the fact that this is just easier to cast, make it better than Soren Markov. Because don't those decks just want Soren Markov if they're going to play a six mana planeswalker like this? <laughs> I'm or to, yeah. an Elspeth? Six I mana think, Elspeth? I think the best well, you're definitely place, running six mana Elspeth. Yeah, the best place for this guy is probably in the hands of some kid or commander player uh, while they're exchanging it for real cards <laughs> that I will actually use. Boom. It's probably accurate to state that this card... I mean, it doesn't do a lot of things that Planeswalkers need. It doesn't really... I mean, it, it can sort of protect itself. It kind itself of protects minus. itself, kind of draws you cards. Yeah. Like, if you're plussing it, you're already winning. It's but an absurdly mind. high loyalty. I have to say, yeah. the loyalty is pretty high, but... I don't know, it's a grim prospect to try and see this being a winnable <laughs> slam in any deck. I'm, like, okay with this card. Like, I just... It's not great, though. I can see it soaring up in... Soar- <laughs> I can see it soaring in price, meaning it'll be worth a lot, and I'll trade it for real cards. Soaring on in price. Uh, onto the lands. lands. Uh, we have the Cycle of Dual Lands, whose names I'm not going to state because I don't have them directly in front of me. Uh, these are lands that don't have land types, so they're not islands, swamps, etc. And they enter the battlefield. You can reveal an island or a... Well, okay. Yeah, you can reveal the type. Yeah, can you we can call reveal these, the type. Can we call these Tango Lands? I hate no, I, microaggressions. Tango. All over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Macroaggressions. <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> Uh, uh, I heard yeah. people call them hand lands. I like hand lands. What about handy lands? Hand lands. Handy lands. Handy lands. Handy lands. <laughs> I thought Mark Rosewater hated handy lands. <laughs> um, anyways. That makes me want to name that them more. Call yeah. it, called the Jastus <laughs> Until he brings us back to Dominaria. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling them you handy lands. players will never get to Dominaria. Yeah. Uh, I think these are playable in two color lists. Yeah, two color lists yeah, and yeah. Uh, mono color lists that are splashing. Yeah, yeah. So like a mono, like a stompy list that's splashing white for Armageddon's. I think right. I'm super okay with that though. Like I would, I mean, right now they have the allied colors only. Maybe they're gonna print print the um, enemy colors in the next set. We don't know, but like I don't know. That's just another land in your repertoire of lands, and it does enable you to be even more consistent with your two color deck lists. Um, and yeah, it just provides two color deck lists some love. You know? Yeah, I think these are pretty pretty playable. They're totally fine. What about any final words, Spencer? Don't play them in wedges. 
Westvale Abbey. Uh, it's a land that adds a colorless mana. Pay five tap. A wingding. He's a wingding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the mana. Uh, yeah, the forget thing. diamond. Well, the only ding, the only digging this does is when you pay one life and five colorless mana to, or five generic mana rather to put a one one white and black human cleric token into play, and then you can pay five mana tap, sacrifice five creatures to transform it, and it becomes. Huge. A, yeah, it becomes a 9-7 flying lifelink indestructible haste legendary creature called Ormondal Profane Prince. I think this card's... Ormondal. <laughs> Summon. <laughs> it's, I mean, I think this card... With, is, with Gristlebrand gone, and I have to say, Gristlebrand is gone. <laughs> yep, except he was stitched together. That is fact. Oh, why, why are you making the sub reference? Those yeah, are. no, that's pretty good. Um... I'm glad this is ending after this card. Uh, no, this card. I think this card's fine. Like people have been ranting and raving about it. But. It's medium. It, we have ac- you have access to Thespian Dark Depths and Highlighter, and that's just infinitely more powerful. Um, this card's not that card. That card. That card combo. The setup cost is high. Sacking five creatures, then getting blown out by a path, path or a swords sword or a sword bounce, re- repeal. anything. Yeah, it's I, pretty bananas. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that while the up the reward is relatively decent, I think this card is only playable in uh, Aristocrats. Uh, yeah, no, I think in Aristocrats this is a yeah. slam dunk for this. For those of you who don't know, Aristocrats is often a junk that may be splashing the fourth color of red. Yeah, usually uh, a four color. Usually four color, um... Basically built around sacrificing value creature mechanics. Aristocrats is like the only uh, deck name that isn't directly descriptive that newer players or more casual players actually know. Yeah, which I don't understand why, but because I think it was a deck in standard. Well, it's been in, like they've had yeah they've had builds of that deck in standard since <clears throat> original Innistrad. Is there five people walking into the church? Oh, oh. nice, nice, nice. Hey, maybe play this card, maybe. Uh, all right, so that has been well, the set wanna, so far. Want to wrap up final thoughts and colors and final thoughts? Um, how do we feel overall? Were there any standout cards or anything that uh, you feel like is going to like? What 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 are, what are we taking from this set, folks? Green really got nothing. They they nope. only have one Arlene thing to lean on. I, oh yeah, well, I'm glad we're done. Um, no, I really had to reach for that, just like that six mana pseudo titan has reach. Oh, don't, don't even put that in the same room. Basically, I just want to say that uh, the the green really got nothing. Yeah, I feel they got very low power level cards. I think <clears throat> right now too in Highlander, there's like I, this is more of a general criticism of, and I've been talking to Ro- uh, Robin about this, but like. Like, um, uh, Sorensen, that deck list is really struggling to find some good cards. And it's just, just, just due to the fact that they're printing good cards in, like, blue, red, and, and the other colors. I, w- I will say they printed the least powerful spell. And, like, it, usually it's just the takeaways, like, gold, planeswalker, or yeah. creature. Whereas, actually, at least this time there's a spell that's a good takeaway from the set. Obviously, there's, I think, I mean, overall, in terms of flavor, art, and a lot of other things, I think this set has a lot of draw, and the power level of the cards are high, but there isn't nearly as many as we all think there were, and I'm sure Ben will talk about that in a minute, um, but just, you know, when we first saw the initial few cards spoiled, we all thought this was going to be the the mega Highlander set since for since cons. I, I stand by the <clears> fact that this set, my opinion of the set is I think it, it adds a lot of awesome fringe cards to fringe decks. It does that in spades. Um, and there's some awesome cards in here. I think there's, like, I think we sort of decided there's five to six mega playables in this set. Yeah. Yeah. I, I said it when I messaged you guys, uh, right off the bat, when they started spoiling cards, it looked pretty nuts. But then, after taking some time to digest some of the cards that we thought were nuts, I think they're fine, but they're not as good as we thought they would be. I don't think all of them are auto-slam into multiple archetypes. Um, and then a bunch of other cards came out that a lot of people really liked, and I just don't think they're that good. Mm-hmm. So this set is actually not a huge... As far as the amount of like really playable cards, I think it falls short. But you get a bunch of really kind of neat, diverse cards for Tier 2 decks, cards that you can certainly brew around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And even if it's not powerful, it's exciting. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, these are cards Absolutely. that make people want to brew, make people want to experiment, go outside of the box, and maybe they'll figure out 
oh, so that's why this, th- this is why I haven't tried other cards like this. The thing with the zombie set theme, and I think there's a decent amount of zombie related cards in the set. There's that three mana, three, three that you can play from your graveyard or something like that. It's a blue black zombie. Mm-hmm. There's the, obviously, the Walking Dead one. Yeah. And, um, Carl. Yep. It is Carl. But I think I think if we could all say in greens, uh, more or less top five multi archetype hitters from the set would be Arlen. Avasin. Avacin. What? Avacin. Avacin. Avacin? Wow. Uh, uh, um okay, Anguish okay. on Making. Yeah. The two one vampire. Oh hell yeah. That guy slams. Oh yeah. And like, And Thing oh. in the Ice. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's I think Olivia ones. is Oh better. sorry, how could I forget about Olivia? I think Olivia is I think Olivia is just better than Thing in the Ice. Prove me wrong, wizards. And by that I don't mean the company, I mean the listeners. Because we're planes all wizards. Walkers. Walkers. <laughs> yeah. Prove me lo- <laughs> prove me wrong, planes. <laughs> and uh, kill Jason the Lord, please. Yeah, please do. Uh, Adam, top three cards in the set. Uh, Angel, uh, Olivia, Anguish of Making. Vindicate, Vampire Lady. And uh, in the angel, I love those. Uh, I'm gonna go with Avison, Avison, and Avison. <laughs> uh, I just want to slam jam that angel. I thing, can't. Man. I I'm gonna lose to that card. And anguish. Card card will lose to the most that isn't a ch- tilt card. Unlike the other cards we we're talking about earlier, is definitely Avison. I'm gonna lose to that Ooh. card. The, that'll be the card from this new set that I think will hose me the most. You can't even war. Le- well, you can. You can war leaders helix it with the ability on the stack, but. I don't know what to do. Well, you're playing. The I mean, you can games, anguish on so. making it. So that's. I mean, that's. <laughs> but then you lost three life, oh. so they're gonna burn you out. <laughs> oh no! No, yeah, I think I think I think this set has a lot of really good. Co- uh, has a couple of really powerful cards. Has a bunch of room for experimentation. A lot of stuff falls flat. But I mean, come on, we're we're not on Dominaria anymore. No. Right? Or cons. Actually, I gotta say, cons was probably like one of the biggest Highlander. Playable um, sets for a long time. Yeah, they messed up with all <laughs> <laughs> the power level was through the roof. I mean, have you seen Mantis Rider? <clears throat> Anyways, folks, that's been the Canadian Highlander set review for Shadows Over Innistrad. My name is Benjamin Wheeler. I'd like to thank Adam Price and Spencer Konica for joining me again. Thanks, guys, for coming out and hanging out in my house. Yeah, sweet. This was rad. Well, you could have called it Three Counselors and Two Cats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, apologize for the cats you may hear in the background. Uh, they are little shits. Um, but anyways, uh, have fun on the battlefield, and uh, keep uh, keep uh, keep voting for Jesus. <laughs> 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 uh, Can't stop the troll. Uh, cut, cut the tape. Cut the tape.